So I'm going to tell you guys a story about the paralleling in Tokyo Ghoul and how it correlates very heavily with the current events that are happening right now in Tokyo Ghoul Re. For those of you who don't know about paralleling, it's a very heavy thing that gets pushed into Tokyo Ghoul, especially with more specific characters. Now, this isn't the primary focus, so I'm going to try and gloss through this and not go into heavy details so you guys don't get confused. So today we're going to be looking at Kaneki, Toka, and Aoto's paralleling to Arata, Hikari, and Renji. Yomo, as well as some side characters. So if you don't know who these characters are, Arata is Toka's father, and Hikari is Toka's mother, and Renji Yomo is Hikari's brother, or Toka's uncle. Now if you don't know about the story of Hikari and Arata and how they kind of met their tragic end, to put simply, Hikari, Toka's mother, was killed by Arima. And this was never stated on why or how, you know, the reasoning behind it, whether it was something massive or it was just Arima doing his job. Um, but Hikari was killed, and Arata basically lost control. He wanted more power, he wanted to gain revenge, so he started to kill and feed on investigators, as well as starting to cannibalize on other ghouls. <laughs> This led him to form a Kagaja that has a very high reputation known as Joker, or Arata's Joker, and it, it's quite powerful, to say the least. Uh, but Arata lost all control. He felt very remorseful uh, to Renji Yomo in saying that he couldn't save Hikari and that he was going to try and get revenge, and he felt so sorry for Renji Yomo that he couldn't protect her, basically. To that, Arata lost his life when he went up against Shinohara and Kuriyamato, which is Akira's father. Now, personality-wise, these characters represent Kaneki and Toga very heavily. Arata was a very kind person. He was a, a ghoul that wanted to coexist with humans to the point where he would cook human food for his children, even though they couldn't even eat it. Not as as I am! You fucking are! Donkey! He wanted to live in peace. He wanted to go through his life happily with his family with no problems whatsoever. Hikari was a very outgoing person. Uh, she was very tomboyish, but she was a very strong and independent woman. As you can see, these resemble Kaneki and Togo very heavily. Now let's move to the current events that lead me to talk about this paralleling. Toka and Hinami in a very, very dangerous situation. They're up against a very phenomenal character known as Suzuya. Now, where does Suzuya come into this story? Where does the paralleling for Suzuya come into this? He's actually two parallelings right now. First of all, he is the replacement for Arima, right? The position he is in right now was Arima's old position. So, Suzuya killing Toka is a paralleling of Arima killing Hikari, Toka's mother. The funny thing as well is that Suzuya is also the under or partner of Shinohara, and Shinohara was the person to capture and kill Arata, Toka's father. So as you can see, there's a lot of history. At the moment, Hinami is in a very bad position. We don't know if she's dead, she is heavily injured, and we don't know where her future lies. She could potentially die in the next chapter, or she could get back up and try and sacrifice herself to give Toka some more time. Who knows? But we are focusing on the Toka situation. And right now, Suzuya is basically face-to-face -face with Toka that cannot really defend herself, let alone her child. Now let's say on chapter 143 Toka does succumb to death you know she gets killed by Suzuya you know the worst of the worst happens and Suzuya manages to slaughter both Hinami and Toka and just leave right you know there's no returning from this the repercussions of these deaths are monumental they are fucking massive two characters in particular that would completely lose their shit over this Kaneki and Aoto now Aoto in this situation now parallels Renji Yomo because Renji Yomo felt so bad, he felt like shit, that he was not powerful enough to save his sister, that he wasn't there to keep her alive and protect her. So Renji Yomo felt almost responsible, and he went out and strived for more power. This is the exact same situation. Toga's death leads to Aoto going a bit more out of control and trying to strive for power, very similar to Renji Yomo. And Aoto's in a very good position to do so because he is currently looking for the original One-Eyed King. The fact that they're even putting that very important spotlight on him, very peculiar spotlight, may lead him down the path of getting his own very important panel time with him kind of wanting to gain more power and quickly. No! No! But the big hitter, Kaneki, comes into the picture. Kaneki finds out Toka died, and maybe Hinami just survived, or she's also dead, right? This changes the game completely, because what used to be Kaneki's ultimate goal, you know, to, to coexist with humans, to create a world where ghoul and humans could live together, is now completely and utterly shattered. It's gone. Throughout the entire story of Tokyo Ghoul, Kaneki never had a true motive, a true place that he could dial down his thoughts to, 
right? The only time he ever did, the only time he was 100% sure with what he wanted to do was when he found out Toka was pregnant and when he wanted to marry her. He put all of his eggs in one basket and he's like, you know what? I'm going to create a future for my family. I'm going to do all this so my wife, who I love, and my child can live a peaceful future without getting hunted. And, and that's the option he came to. He was like, yep, I'm going to do it. Let's go. Let's let's do this. So now you take Toka out of the picture. Take the child out of the picture. What left is there for Carnegie to build? Why would Carnegie even want to build a future when he's lost the one person he's loved and his child? Very similar to Arata, I would picture Carnegie going out of control. And this would obviously go against his efforts of trying to create a peaceful future between girls and humans. To the point where I think the only person that could potentially save him or bring him back to his original self would be Hide. Now that Hide has made his return. Now to kind of finish it all off and bring it all full circle, here's a good way that they could actually segue it into the finale of Tokyo Ghoul somehow. Uh, and this is something I just recently thought of. So Aruto tried to gain more power. He gained a full Kagaja. You know, he cannibalized on ghouls. This highly resembles Kaneki's situation. Be it may, Kaneki already has a full Kagaja. However, he is not in the current position to use it. He's not powerful. He's super weak. You know, he's rapidly aging. He's dying. And he's just in a fucking horrible position when it comes to his health. So let's give a reason for Kaneki to cannibalize because he was on the fence about it. He said he wasn't really going to do it. Only a little bit to keep himself alive, but that's it. Let's push all of the cannibalization onto him after Togu's death. So now he's angry. Now he's got all this power that he needs. There is a drawback when it comes to cannibalizing though, and the reason why Carnegie wouldn't do it to that extent in the first place is because it changes the person. If you cannibalize too much, you start to lose control, and if you lose control while you're at the pinnacle of your character or you have a full Kagaja, there's really no return. So here's the picture. Carnegie cannibalizes because he wants power, because he wants revenge against Suzuya. He goes to the CCG thinking that Furuta is still in control, thinking that Suzuya may potentially still be there, who knows, and he goes and demolishes the CCG. Little did he know Hide had returned and the CCG was back in human hands. Fruit has been kicked out, most likely pushed back to the V organization. Now this creates a massive rift once again between Carnegie and the CCG. Considering the CCG and Carnegie's organization has similar goals with trying to coexist and giving ghouls a fair chance and ghouls not completely slaughtering humans, you'd think they would work together to take down the bigger threat, whether it be Furuta or the V organization. But they've been implementing small snippets of text saying that, you know, Carnegie can't kill humans, you know, because if he does, it breaks everything that he's trying to build. And I thought it's very peculiar because I think that's an obvious thing, right? But the fact that Ishid is forcing it in a lot more, I feel like it's going to play a very important role soon, maybe almost as an ultimatum. If he finds out Suzuya killed Toka, he will want revenge regardless. He goes on this rampage and he tries to kill Suzuya. Here's the ultimatum. He kills Suzuya, who is an investigator. He loses the future and the CCG retaliate. And Kaneki gets caught up in a massive firefight with nowhere to go. Everything that he's built up to that point, the organization, means nothing. At that point, Kaneki's only choice would be to fight and try and rule over absolutely everyone. He would have to potentially kill and obliterate everyone so he could have the portion of the future that he really wanted. It's not the same result, but I feel like it's an option that he could try and go for. If he's influenced by a full Kagaja state and he's just driven by rage and revenge. The other side is that he doesn't get the revenge he wants against Suzuya and Suzuya kills him. Kind of coming into the ending of the story. Maybe they kill each other, who knows, but Suzuya kills him, for instance, and that would parallel heavily with Shinohara killing Arata. So Suzuya wearing Arata, thanks to Shinohara killing Kaneki, who is paralleling Arata. That, that just sounded super weird. And also considering that Suzuya is another parallel to Arima, with Arima killing Kaneki the first time, technically, or, you know, destroying his brain or whatever. I don't know, maybe, maybe Suzuya doesn't kill him, but manages to force Kaneki out of the full Kagaja state and brings him back to a somewhat normal state. Who knows? Maybe Suzuya is remorseful for it. The point I'm trying to make is that there is a rift between the CCG and Kaneki's group. And the fact is, if Hide is the person that's going to lead the CCG or at least help it, you know what I mean? There is a good chance that the bridge that Kaneki needs to, to join the ghoul world to the human world opens up, and that is through Hide. If he finds out that Hide is alive and is working with the CCG, Kaneki can put his hand out and be like, look, we can work together so ghouls and humans can coexist. Do I feel like that's what Hide is trying to do? Of course. I feel like Hide has been helping Kaneki this entire time in the background. Now, I may be completely wrong, but it seems like everything that Scarecrow has done has been so beneficial for Kaneki and his group. And now the fact that Hide could potentially be sitting on a very massive amount of power with some sort of influence over the CCG, he could be the hand that reaches out and connects to Kaneki from the human side. But if Kaneki kills Suzuki, 
you, that hand is most likely gone. Hide retaliates, gets forced to attack, basically. Maybe the only person that can save Carnegie from this mess that he puts himself into, this, this revenge mode, this onslaught of killing people, is Hide. Maybe Carnegie seeing Hide for the final time before he dies brings him out of this revenge state. Who knows, right? Now I'm just getting everywhere. This kind of just completely demolishes the purpose of this video. I hope you guys kind of got the concept that I was going for, you know, the paralleling, how similar it is, how dangerous the future could be for Carnegie, and how the story could change once again. There's so many different counterparts going on right now, so much emotion flying through these chapters, so many people on the chopping block. It's ridiculous. I'm excited to see how everything boils down to a conclusion. We're almost at the infamous chapter 143, which was the ending of Tokyo Ghoul Part 1, so you can expect, you know, something's about to go down that's massively impactful on that chapter. Who knows, Tokyo Ghoul Re may actually come to an end on chapter 143 and we'll pick up maybe a couple months later for Tokyo Ghoul Part 3. So with that being said, I'm actually going to end the video off here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.